Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Thursday, December 23rd of 2021. This will be the last episode of the Uranium Market Minute for the year 2021. This is episode number 56. My name is Justin Hewn. I'm your host. I'm the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Thank you again for tuning in. Really appreciate all of you. Um, before we get into it, as always, nothing in this video is intended to be investing advice. I'm not your financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Please always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing and always take responsibility for your own choices. So I'm going to skip the uh, daily scoreboard here because nothing is happening. Uh, Sprott didn't raise any money, didn't buy any pounds. Uh, no changes in the ETF flows. The spot price ticked down a little bit again, um, as, it, as I was expecting for the, for the year end. So nothing surprising there. The spot price is moving down on negligible volume. And so this is what we continue to see is down, as Art Hyde says, down on vapor, up on volume. That's precisely what's going on. So really nothing concerned there. Um, there's just a couple of things I wanted to speak on briefly before I kind of uh, say thank you and kind of recap the year here. One is that um, I retweeted uh, today a friend of mine, his name is, uh, I believe he pronounces it Borja, B-O-R-J-A on Twitter. And he quoted uh, a couple of snippets from this document that came out from UXC. So if you're not familiar, UXC is uh, pr probably the leading nuclear fuel consultant. Okay, so they, they report on the price um, of uranium. They report on the prices of all of the elements of the fuel cycle. They put out a um, very well done weekly publication called UX Weekly. Um, it's a kind of a high dollar publication that's their primary audience is nuclear utilities. And they've come under a bit of scrutiny over the past few years as some folks such as um, so, such as Segra, such as the guys from Co uh, Sagem Cove, Mike and Tim, you know, they, they kind of dug into UXC's numbers and their own supply and demand modeling and have been very critical of, of some of the some of the numbers that they've been putting out and some of the ways that they've been doing things and what they've been reporting on. And um, one of these reasons is because UXC has been unbelievably conservative in their modeling and in their outlook for the sector. And there's, you know, there's a bit of, I don't know how to say this. There's sort of a belief amongst, amongst the investing community that UXC essentially is, is trying to do a service to their customers, to the utilities by um, kind of tempering the market and not necessarily stirring the market into a frenzy by speaking the honest truth about what they're seeing in the market or what they expect to happen in the market. I'm not necessarily going to go there, but I will say that uh, they definitely have not been very uh, outspoken about their expectations for the future, let's say, in terms of rising prices, in terms of needs for production to come online. And this year is really the first, kind of the first time that they've started to really uh, kind of plant their flag and, and, and speak to the utilities a little bit more directly with a little bit more urgency about um, what they're expecting in the market. And some of that has to do with the same thing that all of us have seen, right? Which is Sprott coming into the market, purchasing um, what is in the grand scheme of things, a negligible amount of uranium, right? I mean, to see the price move so quickly on only 10 million pounds purchased from the spot price, that was mid-August and mid-September of this year. And to see that reaction, I think woke a lot of people up, UXC included. Um, so this is one of those entities that just kind of forever, they're just like, yeah, you know, we probably are going to need to see some higher prices at some point, but this rem it remains that there's not really a lot of action going on. The utilities still aren't really all that interested in the term market. You know, the spot price is sort of stagnant. I mean, this is years and years and years and years of this while the investing community is like, guys, this is, <laughs> this is coming and you need to speak to the utilities about it because it is coming. Uh, come on, get your head out of your, you know what? Uh, and so, so finally, they're starting to come around and they just published this document and John Quakes on Twitter at Quakes99, who I'm sure most of you know is kind of the, the, the macro news king on Twitter when it comes to uranium. He published uh, kind of a screenshot of the, the front page document of this. This is the um, uranium suppliers annual that UXC put out. So I'm just gonna read a couple of uh, snippets from this page that, that John Quakes highlighted so again, and my tweet basically said, 
it's important to understand where the information is coming from. Um, it's equally as important to understand the significance of the source as it is the information, all right? So for you to hear someone like me, someone like uh, the Segra, the Sachin Coves of the world, the Quakes of the world, et cetera, just say bullish things about uranium, you might just be like, yeah, yeah, these guys are, you know, are long uranium, they're talking their book, all right? Sure, I'm biased, I'll admit it. But when you look at it coming from um, the entity that is responsible for uh, reporting to the industry and has been very, very conservative for years, overly conservative in our opinion, saying things like this, then you really have to take note. So I'm just going to read this really quick. Inventories in decline, bold letters. Production cutbacks over the last several years continue to limit global uranium production to 75% of UXC base case reactor requirements in 2021. So they're saying uh, supply was 75% of demand in 2021. They're including secondary supply. I've already discussed this in previous ep episodes, but they're including secondary supply in that 75%. Recognizing the supply to demand imbalance, which is contributing to the rapid decline in available mobile inventories, financial related buyers have taken advantage of this bullish trend in 2021. Advocacy for nuclear power is clearly gaining steam in the US and Europe as nuclear power is seen as crucial to mitigating climate change. Meanwhile, China continues to push for massive nuclear energy growth. And new countries such as the UAE, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Indonesia continue to advance their nuclear power programs as well, not just China. Thus, it is imperative for new production to emerge in meeting this future demand growth over the next few years to avoid a further spike in uranium prices. While it is critical for new projects to be developed by the mid to late 2020s, this could prove challenging given difficulties financing new projects in the current economic climate. Moreover, development timelines for new uranium projects have been notoriously slow in the past for a multitude of reasons. Okay, so this essentially is, um, is, is what we're talking about with this UXC document. And uh, Borja actually, Borja actually quoted, um, no, he, he actually quoted uh, the same snippet from that same article, right? So I just wanted to bring that up to make a point that the most conservative players in the space who are actually responsible responsible for communicating to the utilities are now saying we're expecting higher prices and the utilities you know the, the we need new production to come online utilities know what that means that means they have to voluntarily come come to the table with long-term contracts in order to incentivize um, the care and maintenance lines let alone new production so um, this in my opinion is just a really really great uh, bullish piece to come out to kind of put an end cap on the year Yes, we do have another week of trading, but it's going to be low volume. Just you might as well just turn off your screens and come back in the, in the, in the new year. So I wanted to just bring that up. And then just kind of to, to cap really the year, I first want to say that, um, you know, I really, really appreciate everybody, all of the subscribers, all of our newsletter subscribers, especially for the financial support for us to be able to do what we do. And then all of you, of course, for, for the great support um, through YouTube and through Twitter. I really, really appreciate it. This has been um, a very rewarding and very challenging year. Uh, it's been an unbelievable year for Uranium Insider and for Uranium um, as, in general for the market. It's, it was kind of a, uh, a year for, for the turn, for the official turn for Uranium, in my opinion. This was it. This was the, the confirmation that the bull market is here. Um, after many, many years of contrarianism. And as you know, we've seen some nice pullbacks this year as well, where that contrarian feeling sort of comes back. But um, it's been a phenomenal year to give you some idea of, of the numbers here. U308 up this year, 39.5%. URA, the, the largest uranium ETF. And of course, it's only 70% allocated to uranium. So it doesn't quite have the... Um, the same effects as a pure play uranium ETF. URA up 60.5% year to date. URNM up 83.6% year to date. And keep in mind, this is with a 30% pullback we just experienced. Our focus list for Uranium Insider Pro up 126.7% year to date. So we outperformed URNM about 50%, which I'm very, very proud of. And I'm really uh, grateful for all of the support. And I just hope that everybody out there has a safe and enjoyable holiday. And um, I'm very excited for what's coming in the, in the new year. Thank you so much for all of the support. 
Thank you for uh, subscribing me to, to, to the YouTube channel and supporting us here. Um, I've really been enjoying doing these episodes and I'm very grateful to have this platform and to have an audience here. So thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everybody. And we will see you in the new year. Take care and be well. Cheers.